Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Simpson. I'm a surgeon, but I also have training as a virologist. And I never thought that my training as a virologist, where I actually published papers about viruses and those little microscopic things, would come in handy. And then we got the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the cause of COVID-19, which has intersected all of that. And as a health communicator, Part of my job is to help you negotiate this new world that we unfortunately live in of COVID-19. Today, I want to talk about masks. But first, I have to say I apologize for the hair. One of the things I'm not getting is a haircut for a little while. I'm going to have my own personal barber do that, meaning my wife. My wife around my head with scissors. I'm not... Yeah, I'm not sure about that. So let's talk about masks. Why are masks important and what have we learned about this virus that a lot of us have changed our mind about masks? So let's do a little bit of thing about a virus. I want you to think about a virus like a human being. They don't think, they don't have thought, they're just this chemical reaction of this coat of RNA that come in and infect us. But people say, well, why would you have a mask? Because a mask's fibers it's kind of like a human being walking through a tunnel. The virus can just kind of go through there. Well, two things. The virus doesn't have wings. They're not flying around. Viruses have to be transported on something. So they have to be transported on something big. And those are the droplets that come out that are microscopic when you speak, when you laugh, when you cough, when you sneeze. You'll see all of these particles go out if you do that slow motion photography. And viruses have to go on those droplets. They can't go by themselves. And those droplets are big. By the way, they're electrostatically charged. So it's more like now you take those viruses as humans and put them in a 747 and try and put through a tunnel, they're going to get caught. The 747 won't make it through the tunnel. So that's why we have masks. And masks trap them. And masks are really not for me, they're for you from me. When I'm wearing a mask out in public, what I'm saying is I respect you as a human being and I'm wearing a mask to protect you from me. And when you wear a mask, you're protecting me from you. You're being courteous. And don't we all wanna be courteous to one another? Don't we all wanna stop the spread as much as we can? There's a bunch of different type of masks out there. Some are very useful, some are not so, and I kind of want to go through them so that you can sort of get an idea of what they are. The most common mask that we see today are these ones that are made by people. This one was made by my friend Angel in Alaska because she thought that with the shortage that we needed them, and I thank them. These are very simple cloth masks. It's easy to put on, you have these nice little straps, it was so nicely, it's very comfortable. And that was a wonderful thing to do because you can wear this anywhere. It's easy to breathe through. There's nothing in it that bothers me. I like it. The most common mask that I wear, I have all these masks here. The most common mask that I wear though out is are these masks that I wear in the hospital. They're required They hand one to you as you go in. They screen everybody. As I go into the hospital, both hospitals, they take my temperature every single time and they hand you a mask and you have to wear this. You cannot be in the hospital or my office or anywhere without this. Simple mask, fits on like this. Great thing, it's easy to take a breath in. It's easy to breathe out. And everything kind of goes out the side. Most things get trapped in here. Have you ever opened up a washing machine and had a blanket and socks and all of the socks are on the blanket? Well, that's what happens to the viral particles that get trapped in this mask. So I'm preventing you from getting my stuff. Simple I think. Here's a couple of little facts. This does not impair me, nor did the cloth mask, from breathing and getting oxygen. How do I know? Because we can put little oxygen monitors on our fingers and, you know, in operating rooms, we do this sort of crazy thing. And I can tell you, my oxygen's just fine wearing this mask or the next grade up, or the next grade after that. I'm not getting carbon dioxide retention with this mask, so I'm not getting carbon dioxide poisoning, whatever that is. There is no latex in this mask. This mask is endorsed by every major lung society. I happen to have a little bit of asthma or reactive airway disease. So do many of my patients. There's no reason you can't wear this mask. None. 
I have patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, every major lung organization, every one of them say they should be wearing these masks so should people around them. The next mask, the kind we wear in the operating room every day, all day long, is this one. Slightly thicker than the other mask, fits around me a lot better. I can tie it up so it fits it strong. And again, easy to breathe through. It's what's called an N65 mask, meaning it will trap 65% of the particles from coming in to me and much more of them going out. The mask that you see most often referred to is this. This is the N95 mask. This is the mask that was in, all masks were in short supply at the beginning of this epidemic. This mask was the one we all cared about. This mask, you can buy these masks, but these masks have to be fitted to the individual. This mask was fitted to me. They're disposable. They're cost before the pandemic. They cost about three and a half bucks. They probably cost anywhere from eight to 11 bucks now, but they fit on. They prevent 95% of the virus particles from coming to me. When I operated on the person with COVID-19 and I had to open their trachea, their airway where all of the virus was, this was the mask that we used. In a study of over 1,800 people who wore these, dealing with patients who had COVID-19, none of them got sick. And I have to take a moment to think and for you to remember, there have been 600 healthcare workers in the United States as of today who have died of COVID-19, protecting you. Again, this mask is fitted. When I put it on, it's like this, it might be hard to hear me. This mask is when it's fitted, my head is put into a chamber and they spray some spray in there. And if I can smell the spray, it doesn't have a good fit. That's how tight these masks are. At the end of the day, when I'm wearing this mask, I have bruises all along here and, and around here. So this is an uncomfortable mask to wear, but you get used to it. But taking it off at the end of the day is kind of like taking off pants that are a little tight at the end of the day. The nice thing about this mask is it's very protective. It's very good. And if I had someone in my family who had COVID-19 or I had COVID-19 and they were taking care of me, these are the masks they would use to protect themselves. You don't need these masks for everyday walking around. And if the mask is not fitted to you properly, it's sort of silly. These masks are still in a little bit of short supply. One type of mask that I don't recommend, this one. See these little spouts out here? It's very easy to breathe because all of the air goes out there. Sometimes Some of them have little filters they try and put in them, but these are not good masks. So for going around the town and stuff, this is the mask I recommend. This is a mask we give out in the hospital, in my clinic, my office. It's easy, it's simple, it's disposable. If I sneeze into this mask, I can quickly trade it out. I have, I have hundreds of them. So remember, there is no debate that masks reduce the spread of SARS-CoV-2 virus. They decrease the incidence of COVID-19. The studies are very clear. You need to wear them because you want to be kind to your friend. You want to be kind to that person over there. They might be a stranger. When I see people who aren't wearing the mask in public places, I avoid those public places. And I encourage my family to avoid them. I'm wearing a mask to protect you from me. You're wearing a mask to protect me from you and thank you. For more information, you can visit my website, yourdoctorsorders.com or drsimpson.com. Thanks for listening. Please wear a mask.